Good morning. It is Friday, July 31st, just uh, three short days away from our team members coming back together and getting ready to thrive and not just uh, survive in the uh, current uh, challenging times. I always say that you know, hidden inside of every challenge is an incredible opportunity and, and we do have an incredible opportunity to uh, make a difference in a community that is anxious um, and worried wondering what comes next. So can't wait to see folks back here on uh, Monday and hope you have a restful weekend before that. Just a quick note, um, you know, ever since uh, the horrific events that occurred in Minneapolis uh, with George Floyd, uh, <clears throat> our country and our community have been uh, facing, uh, putting a mirror up to our faces in terms of uh, the fact that social justice, social injustice, I would say, uh, is still a factor in our country. And one of the things that we will not do as uh, an organization striving to be the most caring place on earth is just pretend that those issues aren't real. So I just want our team to know as we come back that we certainly don't have all the answers, uh, but we have been asking a lot of questions. Uh, I personally have met with uh, numerous community leaders to ask them uh, what what their thoughts are, uh, what they have seen and experienced. Uh, we've had a town hall meeting with a group of, of our own team members uh, down at LCCA with the head of the Boys and Girls Club by the name of Steve Mickens, just talking about <clears throat> how do we open up some real dialogue and get into some of these tough issues uh, that we're facing about our differences and some of the realities of what's going on uh, in our country. And I'll tell you one of the incredible experiences I've had the blessing to participate in over the last month is, is a couple of meetings, as a matter of fact, three meetings with groups of our own high school students that come from very different perspectives in a number of our different high schools. And let me just start by saying, uh, if adults uh, had half of the compassion, half of the care and uh, the sensitivity that these young people have, uh, we'd be talking a lot less about this particular issue, but but they are just an incredible group of young people. They've come together. We've got some uh, we've got some uh, potential action plans as we move forward. We're going to continue those meetings, and uh, and again, we're going to continue to stress in the Hall County School District um, that we believe that we have an obligation to always listen, uh, to practice empathy, and that involves suspending our own judgments. Um, and trying to hear the perspective of people who may think differently uh, than we do. Uh, and that as we put ourselves in other people's shoes, uh, that we collectively will move forward uh, and come up with better solutions uh, and leave the camp better than we found it for future generations. So in terms of where we are, we are gonna continue to meet with this incredible group of students. Uh, we have uh, looked at our elementary libraries and have found that uh, the libraries and the books for our youngest students uh, come nowhere close to mirroring uh, individuals in those books that, uh, that represent our student body. I'll be talking with our media specialists and uh, Mr. Kevin Bale, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching Learning, about how we uh, implement some steps to uh, upgrade those libraries to have more literature uh, that does include uh, the, the diversity that represents our community. Uh, we will continue to find a way to give voice to our students. One of the realities of what, what I heard from our students is that almost every one of them, regardless of their background and where they came from, have experienced multiple uh, incidents of social injustice within their high schools, and they felt rather helpless. And one of the reasons they felt helpless is that in several of those accounts, they said that our team members were there and witnessed it. And in their minds, um, nothing happened. That breaks my heart that young people see something that all of us could agree is, is morally wrong, um, that they have an adult in their presence uh, that they trust and that that adult, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't take a step uh, to address that. So we'll be we'll be getting these voices of these students in front of all of us. It has been a healthy reminder for me that there's work to be done. Uh, these students also are going to work with us to come up with a survey so that each of our high schools and probably our middle schools 
will at least get to see uh, from a student voice perspective what they are experiencing uh, in terms of social injustice, discrimination, uh, racism at our own Paul County schools. Um, and we also, I'm excited about, uh, are going to look for ways to create a, a uh, diverse speakers bureau of adults in our community that have been successful that can come in and, and speak with uh, small groups of our students about, uh, about their journey to success in this incredible country we call the United States of America. So, so I just wanted to come to you and let you know that uh, social justice is on our mind. I'll be the first to tell you that uh, our, our first and primary goal is to try to find a way to have school this year that keeps adults and students safe. Um, and then also uh, provides effective instruction regardless of what format we're in throughout the year. Uh, but I would remind you that a piece of keeping students safe uh, is to ensure that we're continuing to do everything we can uh, to make sure that we are an organization um, that represents social justice. So looking forward to seeing everybody. Um, have a great final weekend and we will see you all back here on Monday.